What's up folks? We're back again for another episode of Monster Talks. Today is episode seven with Jose Ochoa. Jose Ochoa is a author, he's an entrepreneur, and also a Latino leader. So how's it going, Jose? Thanks oh, for coming cool. by, brother. No, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. So tell us a little bit, Jose, about uh, how you got started in entrepreneurship and and a little bit, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, you know what, I'm, I'm raised on, on Chihuahua City. Um, I studied over there on public schools. And then uh, when I was a kid, I, I just to move to, on summers to Ciudad Juarez to, to work with a family that, uh, one of my aunts that owns a construction company, very successful company. And, um, so yeah, so every every summer she gave me some uh, uh, summer jobs, and then suddenly I start uh, sometimes like selling things on the neighborhood, things like that, very, but very minimal. And then when I graduated as an industrial engineer, <coughs> I I didn't find any any opportunity of employment over there in my hometown. So I moved to Ciudad Juarez, and then I start working on the on the maquiladora industry there back on 2002. And then um, from there, I, I, I stayed there with Delphi Automotive Systems and then with Siemens. And then um, I realized a niche about that, a niche of opportunity as a vendor for um, packaging and logistics. So I, ta I, I met my business partner there on, on Delphi and then we come up with this idea of closing the gap in the industry because it was very frustrating dealing with packaging suppliers in the States and in Mexico. And uh, so I thought, you know what, There's, there should be a better, a better way to do this with better, uh, higher standards um, without all the hassle to um, to deal with the vendors. So we come up with this idea, and then later I, I quit on, the, on my job, on my nine to five job as an engineer, and I started from the ground, like just uh, from my dining room, <laughs> calling cold calls, and uh, so that's how everything started in Mexico, and then 2009 in the, here in, in the United States. And when you first got started, um, did you have a background in business or what was it like? How did you get educated on how to start your own business? You know what, since high school, uh, it catch my attention a lot, the continuous education. So in high school, I discovered books. And my first book was one book called The Quest. And uh, in Spanish is La Busqueda. So I fall in love with the narrative of that book. It's a very short book, and, uh, and the story is about a, an eagle that uh, falls into a farmer, in, in a farm, and was uh, growing with some hands, but she knew um, she wants something different. I mean, and bottom line, um, she realized she's an eagle as she start looking for her, her destiny and all that. So I love it, I love it and, I, and blow my mind. So from there I start accumulating books. So I have like 20, more than 25 years or 30 years wow. uh, reading continuously. So that give me like the, uh, like the background on business that I built for myself in terms of uh, like uh, I always have that passion for like I mean big business guys that they create this computer company or this technology company yeah. or this so it's inspiration and yeah. learning so from there and then when I when I start my company um, I start like uh, with a with a better budget. I start like uh, going into webinars and a lot of trainings and a lot of networking programs and yeah. a lot of heavy on training. So yeah. I'm always uh, till now I I do it like, every week. Every week yeah. I put two hours of study. Uh, how do you see? I mean, 
I, I think about this a lot, you know, and, and it's easy to reach success, right? Or I wouldn't even say it's easy to reach success, but reaching success is one stage, right? Yes. But keeping success over a sustained time, now that's... That's, that's the challenge. That's the challenge, right? And so you think that's one of the keys to staying sharp and staying on top of your game is to continue to educate yourself? Yes, because you, you know what? I, I, it's very clear to me that uh, you don't need only to find for opportunities. So when opportunity comes, you have to be the right person for yeah. that opportunity. So readiness is key. So yeah. opportunities will will not wait for you to be ready. So you have to invest in yourself and put yourself in a position to win. Yeah. So that way you are ready for any opportunity. So you are in a better position than others. So, and also it's a great tool for me when you, as a business owner, when you face challenges like the one um, that I faced with my company in 2018, like losing a million dollars from uh, Friday to Monday, <laughs> overnight. Mm -hmm. And uh, so all that knowledge, uh, it's what creates you a thick skin. Yeah. A thick skin to don, I mean, some, uh, even I, 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 I hear about guys that commit suicide with, yeah. with no, problems yeah. that size, right? Absolutely. And um, so that is not that it's not, that problem is not going to put you on your needs, but it will for sure absolutely but you have more tools and better uh emotional intelligence to take their decisions and to yeah. uh and to wake up or stand up uh, better and faster for that and recuperate on that so i see it as a tool and in that 2019 event i'm not, 18 event it helped me a lot yeah even even that yeah, i can imagine a million dollars oh like it's it enough was, to make somebody lose I mean, sleep I, almost almost we almost shut down the company yeah uh, because it was a million dollar plus everything that creates uh, or disrupt the environment of our business with vendors clients yeah. uh, banks yeah. and everything so it's heavy and, and employees salaries all that so, i tell people that sometimes you can have a profitable business and still go out of business yes being profitable and yes. still uh, having good clients and having a business growing uh just with things that are you know it, it could be any of things but it could be mismanagement of taxes mismanagement of staff mismanagement of of just a, a deal maybe gone wrong you know yes. or something uh and so uh it's big that people understand that you know when you're starting a business you're gonna go through those things and it's like you said having a thick skin uh and if you make it through you come out stronger on the other side of that fence mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's uh, for sure in, nowadays if you are an entrepreneur and you and you don't have the habit of reading mm -hmm. and training yourself investing yourself in knowledge I mean you will be very far behind of yeah. others because don't even with that those habits there is no warranty of success yeah. right yeah, I think it was Abraham Lincoln that said, if you gave me six hours to chop down a tree, spend four hours sharpening your axe. Yes. Right? Uh, uh, that way you can chop it down easier. Yeah, and right? unfortunately, you know what, Raul? Uh, on Latins, it's it's very low rate on, on reading. We are, we are not a... a we are not readers. Why, why do you think that is, Jose? Because I know, I, you know I, we're going to veer off a little bit, but why do you think it is that that us like this is, is algo de cultura or yes. es algo I think it's culture it's culture I mean it's very difficult if, if you go to a house here in our community I mean very rarely you will find books over there yeah. I mean maybe an encyclopedia all encyclopedia yeah. or cooking books something like that but business books or I mean, something like that, very you, rare. Do you think and it's I know a, a lot of business it's owners. It's a orgullo, or is it uh, being prideful, or is it just that you maybe know, our parents don't know, so they don't pass that to us, or? I think it's misinformation. It's not because I know if, if and it's not because we are, uh, uh, we don't know about, I mean, that, if you know that that's key on business, yeah. I know you're gonna do it. 
we are not stupid Latins we are very smart but the thing is that you have to buy the, the idea of that yeah. and see the progress right yeah. because sometimes they say like I, I talk with several business owners and they say well you know what you have boxes and boxes of books and uh, I even make more money than you and I don't even read a book a year yeah, yeah, yeah. but that's not the key I mean the yeah. book is not, is not to make the money it's to have the right conversations create the right opportunities and it's not immediately i mean maybe yeah. i can read all the books and, uh, and be on the same stage for like 20 years maybe maybe in year 21 man i'm gonna hit it yeah. heavily yeah. because i have all that uh, compound effect yeah. of uh, knowledge connections and all and reading is not just like you read it and you keep the knowledge you have to put that knowledge in action yeah. and then that narrative out of your mouth attract other big minds as well yeah. so you are going to be invited to other conversations and people like uh, on dinners or, or networking events or trade shows yeah they are going uh, they will like to be next to you because of the conversations, right? Because you feel you feel great when you when you hear a guy talking on very interesting things. Yeah. I mean, you try to stick with the guy, right? And, yeah. and I mean, hey, may I have your email address? I, I would yeah. like to keep the conversation. So I've been in different stages uh, before where I, I can see the value of my conversation. And and uh, and all the compound effect of books yeah. catching the attention of very high level guys that they want to keep the conversation with me later after yeah. the event things like that absolutely so I think it attracts exactly. too right you, like you said yes it attracts people to you uh, I think early on when I would see your post uh, before I knew you seeing your post I already knew more or less your mindset just by what you were posting yeah. seeing that you were constantly working on yourself. Um, seeing that you were investing into yourself by going into seminars and yes. spending your own money yeah on being out there you know because that that is a big thing right uh, you have to uh, invest in yourself and that is an issue but and it's hard yeah because it's hard. you have to sacrifice family time yeah I mean um, you have to sacrifice a lot of things on, on, on family and personal side like for example I I keep doing work and study on Saturday and Sundays every week I, I, I never skip a weekend on learning yeah or uh, so that way the way I see it is that my competitors they cannot keep up with me yeah right it's a compound I feel, as, in, I feel the same in way one year yeah man I will I will yeah. have I mean bigger and better conversations and opportunities yeah. that them and you have to you have to realize I'm 46 yeah. and I know guys on the 20s man the guys have the talent and the power and the energy yeah so I need to be very uh, strategic of what could be my advantage over them right yeah. and it's not that i'm better than them or i hate no. them or anything like that no. it's a game i mean yeah. business is the ultimate sports arena right yeah yeah no I, i'm glad that you bring that up and you have your your gloves with you today yeah um and and i love your mindset you know when we've talked before you said it, you know it's like boxing you know my dad box for a living i box but in a different arena yes uh and this is the business world that we box in but that's good that uh you know i feel it, that's really interesting that you brought up that you're saying that you uh you know when you come out in the, and you're doing all this uh you're, you're investing into yourself you're trying to find an edge over people um it's what we go through right you have to stay relevant and you have to stay working hard i always tell people because sometimes people say well why won't you uh like some people don't want to share oh secrets or yeah. like there's a secret the sauce secret into sauce. what that what we do right but 
I'm an open book. I tell people, I'll tell you everything we do here. I'll teach you everything we know yeah. here. The difference is, are you going to want to put in 15 hours a day? Are you going to want to, uh, you know, spend those sleepless nights and wake up early in the morning? Uh, that's where I feel like I'm going to have a competitive edge because I'm going to want it bad. I'm going to want it more and I'm going to continue working harder, you know? So that's, that's good that you say that because I think that's a lesson for a lot of people to understand that uh, when you're running your business, it's not a, sometimes people reach success and they're like, oh, I've got it all. You've seen it to a lot of fighters, right? Yeah. They make a lot of money and then they have a downfall. They start losing fights. They start doing this because you get lazy, <laughs> you know? Uh, you get complacent a, you with You get yourself. complacent, yeah. yeah success is very, I always, uh, I, I coach and mentor a lot of startups in Latin America, here in the States. Yeah. And I mean, I'm amazed of the talent and the, I mean, the vision of this, these young guys. I even coach guys from India called Calcutta. And uh, man, I say, wow, those guys are going to eat the whole world, right? Yeah. The business. And yeah. But um, it's a, like 80% of them, if not more, they are always thinking, I mean, the mindset is like, I'm going to be rich, I'm going to be driving the Mercedes, a million dollar house, and this and that, and, yeah. yada, and I say, no way, man. I mean, you I mean, you have to think completely different about that because that's not the reality on, on entrepreneurship. Yeah. Entrepreneurship, it's miserable, <laughs> it's very lonely, yeah. right? It's very hard. Yeah. You quit your job, with uh, with life insurance, with health insurance, with their salary to your to your bank account, all that, and you have to triple the work hours for less the money that you used to earn on on a salary basis and, and a company. Yeah. So you have to understand that, and it's I mean they don't realize, and so they jump into entrepreneurship and they get get very frustrated because they say, oh my gosh, I I was thinking that I will I mean ha manage my own time and like work three hours a day or four yeah. hours and this and that they say no I mean it's you have to you have to have a different brain for yeah. entrepreneurship it's not now it's sexy to be entrepreneur right yeah but it's not at all I mean it's it's yeah. hard I mean you you gotta be able to risk everything you have to be open to lose everything and be on the on the street right naked yeah. without yeah. anything or you have to be uh, available to handle a lot of success and a lot of money right be on the street yes. in debt <laughs> from yes. what you did even yes. though you were running a successful company right, right? yeah so and they <laughs> i mean like they opened eyes like oh my gosh i i yeah. never thought about that i say yeah but that's the reality and that's yeah part of why i I, I, I published the book because yeah. I see a lot of needs on, on young entrepreneurs or even entrepreneurs that they have years with the company, but they still the same, same level. I mean, 25 years running the company and they're still working in the company instead of for the company. Yeah. And it, it's miserable, it right? Is. Because they, they get frustrated, they don't make uh, enough money, and they just keep surviving on the business. And I hate when I go on the street or uh, he, uh, here in my city and other cities, and I use the services or products of a small, uh, a small company, a small business, yeah. and I see the lack of engagement of the owner, the lack of engagement of the employees, the place is all, all dirty, it smells bad. I mean, the service is, I mean, yeah. extremely low quality <coughs> so I hate that because yeah. and so that's why I want to let's say on a mission to change that yeah. because when you change that you give a lot of benefits to the community right I yeah. mean you create better employment better salaries yeah. better better quality standards for people around around us and all that so business uh, businesses small businesses in the United States are the core of the economy I yeah. mean that's it's, it's not Apple it's not Microsoft those guys yeah I mean what they're really uh, they're really uh, uh, 
core and the heart of business and cash flow on the streets is the small businesses. Yeah, for sure. So uh, you're an author now. Yeah. And congratulations Thank on you. that, man. Uh, I really look up to that, brother. And I, Thank I you. yeah, that's amazing what you're doing. Can you tell us a little bit about your book and a little bit about the experience of writing a book? I know before even this, con <laughs> we, uh, Jose and I was or had already a lot of conversations even before this podcast. And I can pick your brain all day, man, because you have a wealth Thank of you. information. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that experience about writing your own book? And you know, can you tell us about the book a little bit yes so the name of the book it's getting the ring mm -hmm. because it, it was like uh, I had a session uh, well I, I've been thinking like for two years to publish the book but you know I mean publishing a book I'm a business owner I mean logistics packs you know that say I mean a book that's completely different so how but I have uh, I always take notes I have like 500,000 uh, notes on my phone, every idea or every concept, like if I interact with a business owner and I catch some idea, I write it down. That's so awesome. I put a lot of, of things like that and then it give me a lot of uh, data and a lot of uh, narrative when I interact with those startups uh, yeah. all, all over the place. So I say, I have to publish a book. I will have to publish a book. So then, I happened to help the founder of Reebok to publish his book on Spanish because I was reading the book from France to here on the plane and I, I read it and I say, oh my gosh, this book is fantastic, it's so inspirational, right? Oh, a guy from UK Bolton, a small town in UK from nothing, second generation in a small shop, he was able to create a multi-billion dollar company that overshadows Nike and Adidas, right? Yeah. And um, so I, I have a great conversations with the guy, and when I arrive here to El Paso, I call the guy and say, why you don't publish this book in Spanish? He say, because I don't have anyone that I can trust to, to help me on, on, on Latin America. I say, I, I got you, man. Mm -hmm. So I put this guy in, in, a, in contact with one of my friends in Mexico City that owns a publishing company and th this guy, it's, it's a, he's a top seller, a best seller outdoor as well on, uh, on books of persuasions. So the guy is a crack. So I put them together on Zoom. So they, they like each other, they like I mean, the, the quality of this company, yeah. and they signed the contract and they published that. And then he invited me, uh, Joe Foster is the name of the founder of Reebok. What, he, what's the name of the book uh, that Joe Foster? That uh, you guys, Shoemaker. Shoemaker. Yeah, in that's Spanish. A, that's amazing, man. It's a great book. I, gotta I've got to definitely pick that up. Yeah, it's a fantastic book. It's the same or even better than the one of Nike, Shoe Dog. Yeah, I love Shoe Dog, was and, one of my, yeah. like, it's so amazing. Like if you guys never read Shoe Dog, Shoe Dog is I highly recommend it. Uh, Shoe Dog, I mean Nike almost went out of business one time. Yes. I mean they had the feds almost shut them down, right? Yes. Uh, and they had a, a was it a Chinese investor that pulled them out yeah, of Japanese? A ja yeah, they so I mean it, that story uh, for a guy to create a company with he, he said that it was a bunch of like oddballs creating the most athletic brand you know there was a guy in a wheelchair a guy that had you know that uh there were just an odd crew of people that created nike like the most people you would not know to create uh, nike and these guys put the company together to create i mean the most amazing brand and yeah, the guy started uh phil knight started selling the shoes yeah out of the trunk on the yeah. on the trail uh, on the, the track yeah on the track fields yeah. on Seattle yeah and at the same time if you I mean if you think about it at the same time it was Joe Foster yeah on UK on Bolton the small town trying to create this shoe company uh, because he used to work for uh, his father on a shoe company they are shoemakers and then but he was young on the like in the on the 1950 something like that so he wanted he have another vision for the company so but not the father so he decided to quit on the family business and create his own company with his brother so they create reebok 
from there wow. and they start from nothing and uh, I mean I was uh, dining with a guy yeah who was I saw those me, pictures man. you know it's what amazing. when I when I was in America I knew America was the crown that for me to explode the business yeah and at the same time it, it, you may feel Nye was doing another strategy so but when we explode on business we overshadow Nike Nike was taking very poor decisions back then yeah but the thing the game changer was that they they signed Michael Jordan yeah that yeah, was the game that. changer for them yeah. like for Reebok the game changer was that Rolling Stones and and other uh, celebrities uh, during the Oscars and other ceremonies this yeah. wearing they their shoes wearing the shoes yeah so it he said my biggest problem Jose was to I mean keep, keep up with the demand and yeah. we didn't have enough money and we didn't have enough manufacturing capacity so I yeah. took the plane and I was flying all over to Asia to make new deals with wow. with um, with manufacturers so I mean mind-blowing experience yeah. so he said you know what Jose uh, we are going to do the the publishing session with media on Mexico City and I want you to be there and uh, so that was a big uh, honor That's for me big, right? huge because honor man I was I mean and and I was about to say no <laughs> because I was in Miami uh, like one day before the event something like that and I said you know what I told to one of the guys maybe I was given the opportunity and the guy told me you know what Jose you can do whatever you want you're a big boy but just think about it you are the only mexican businessman that this guy trusts yeah. to put on the finger to you and say i want you with me on mexico city talking with force with uh, televisa tv azteca yeah. i mean expansion all those big media guys and that's a big privilege and it's a lot of exposure for you it's huge and i say you know what yes yeah let's do it so it was heavy i mean very very hard trip but finally i and i say you know what wow i'm i'm very happy that i i did it i take the chance to be there so over there over dinner on mexico city i was drinking a uh, negroni with him mm -hmm. and he say jose how many peoples do you touch when you talk and you give your sessions with those young guys. I said maybe five, ten guys there. Okay, if you publish your book, you will be able to touch thousands and thousands of people. That's absolutely So you right. are going to give them the privilege to learn from all that from your book. And I say, you know what, you are right. I, ne I never saw it that way. So let's do it. I will do it. So then I hired the same company yeah. that helped him to publish the book. And uh, now we are here two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, we published, I self-published the book and it's it's about to be on a paperback and hardcover pretty yeah. soon and it, i mean the experience of writing it was like when i sent the documents i mean the writing the content the manuscript to yeah. the guys they say wow that fast was there? i say yeah, yeah you know what <laughs> i was like i mean i have it here you're hungry chest. you're hungry yeah. yeah even that the introduction of the book I wrote it down at 3 a.m. in the morning. Wow. I wake up at 3 a.m. and say, this is what I want to uh, place on the book for introduction. And I, my wife, she knows me and she said, oh, Jose, it's <laughs> one of those crazy nights, right? I said, yeah, you know me. So I was yeah. on, the, on the dining table writing down all that. I mean, immediately, and when I send it to this guy, the guy's a bestseller. Yeah. He said, wow, Jose, fuck, it's really good, man. I love it. And uh, and then just to finalize some of the chapters, I put myself into Ruidoso. I rent a cabin, yeah. and I was uh, smoking my cigar and my scotch, and I finalized over there the, some of the chapters. It's not chapters, it's rounds. So I, as you say previously, so when I when I get in the session with the company, talking, I mean, everything about my life, my family, business, all that, they say, you know what? You have to leverage on the heritage of your father because yeah. 
when we make the test on you, the personality test, you are very bold, you are very like a sparring. I see you as a sparring, mm -hmm. and your father was a, a world champion in 1958. And uh, so why don't honor your father and let's make the book with like boxing things yeah. like instead of chapters we are going to do rounds yeah there so will be 12 rounds and then it's getting the ring because i know you are very pushy with people okay you think you can make it just let's get in the ring man yeah let's get in. so it was very catchy and i love it and uh so yeah we decided to to do it uh with all the boxing thing which i love boxing yeah i don't practice boxing but i love it since i was a kid yeah i mean looking um uh i mean talking with my father about boxing and, and looking the julio cesar chavez fights yeah. all that i was able to meet mike tyson here on paso yeah. yeah and you know I, I love boxing so now i every time i'm working i have these guys next to me just like to make a break and think about a pro business proposal or something that i'm just manipulating these guys smelling them it's i don't know it's something like eclectic that i love on the, on the globe no, i love the concept everything came out good and you know thanks for thinking about me when it came to you know i know i i helped out with the pictures for the cover thank of the you. book for thank you for entrusting me uh, to capture that oh, uh, special you. moment i know you and i ended up doing like a four to six hour <laughs> shoot <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know because we got lost in the shoot and what we were doing man but the you know there were definitely some iconic beautiful pictures and i, that, I love it i love your passion for that because you know what with other guys i previously have experience on like okay i mean the clock's ticking yeah. i mean these pictures they don't even suggest anything i have to be like hey what about this? uh you know what let's see and yeah. you i mean i mean that's why we spent like four hours there <laughs> man five hours yeah. because the conversation was fantastic you yeah. were very knowledgeable guiding me on you know what let's do this that and i mean the result is fantastic you will yeah. see on the cover of the yeah. of the book it's a it's fantastic awesome. book. we're gonna put that up so Devin, if you can put yeah. that up for for everybody to check yeah, out it's i love a i love beautiful that, beautiful that. cover yes. and a beautiful story man tell us a little Thank bit you. about your father i know you played a, a major role in your life yes and uh just i got lost in the story that's when i find other people that are passionate it just raises my bar and my level mm -hmm. uh, uh, and hearing the story, uh, the stories that you shared, the, the photos that you brought, um, the chalecos that you brought. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, just to feel it and, and see it, man, it's so genuine. Like, can you share a little bit about yes. uh, about your, your father and his yeah. impact? Yeah, so my father, they call it, the nickname was Lupe Ochoa because the name is Guadalupe, Jose Guadalupe Ochoa. I have the same name, but on the boxing thing, they, they call it Lupe Ochoa. So, when he was very young, like maybe 18s, 19s mm -hmm. uh, year old, um, he escaped from his home on, in Chihuahua City because my, uh, my grandpa, he was completely upset of let him, letting him boxing, right? Mm -hmm. So he just left home. He traveled to Ciudad Juarez, and Ciudad Juarez used to be a very successful uh, businessman, uh, last name Ostos. Mm -hmm. So this guy uh, used to own a lot of uh, car dealerships in Juarez and all that. So the guy was the sponsor of my father. So, and, and, and everything of that happens, um, even when I, so my father was married and then he lost uh, his, uh, a wife and then remarried with my mother mm -hmm. so but anyways he i mean he started fighting over there on Ciudad Juarez and then in Chihuahua and then they invite him to Arena Mexico and in, in Mexico City and then he was selected as um, as the um, representing Chihuahua on tournaments and then he was that good that they they put in on the national team to represent Mexico on the Pan American Games on Venezuela. Mm -hmm. So he was fighting, the last fight was against a guy from the United States, and he defeated the guy, and that's how he be, uh, became a, a world champion of the, they call it Cinturón de Diamante, that mm -hmm. was in 1958. And wow. uh, so my mother uh, have a big album of pictures, right? But yeah. 
everyone in every single event on the family they will they talk about my father oh yeah lupe el campeon and this and that because he was the only one with that level of achievements right on yeah. sports so everybody borrows the the album so at the end it was very in bad shape and all that so when i moved to the united states i told my my mother you know what give me that album i will keep it i will honor that so i frame it i i, I put pull out all the the best pictures i i even have the tickets from arena mexico of him yeah. and i have everything all the memorabilia and i frame it and he, my mother she gave me the original ropes or the batas yeah. the one from chihuahua and the one from mexico it was fantastic the, are the ones that yeah. we see in the picture so i was like uh, before the session, I, I I told my wife, you know what, I should bring the ropes with me and yeah. honor those ropes. That was a and great. It's, I mean, this is is the sherry on the pie, yeah. right? That yeah. Those. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so that's the story. And he was uh, when I was a kid, everybody was saying, hey, hey so he's your uh, uh, son. What about he fighting? I mean, boxing. Maybe he's like you and Jedi. <laughs> and um, I'm, but he never pushed me, and I, yeah. I never catch the um, uh, really uh, my intentions to go and fight like yeah. a pro, something like that. I was like more. He was more uh, pushing me to go to school. Say, go yeah. to school. Go to school. You gotta finish your major and so on that so i focus on that and never on on boxing but i but i really enjoy like and then uh it was a big ceremony when i was a teenager because they induct my father for the hall of fame on chihuahua oh, so nice. he's on the hall of fame over there as well and i mean it's fantastic i feel very yeah. proud about that and now i mean i never expect to do something like that yeah but i feel super fulfilled to honor the the boxing career of my father yeah. on my book and attached to my business passion yeah so it's a perfect combo for me like having that that uh, honoring my father and then uh, putting all my passion for business there yeah so i love it that's why i, I love i love this book you feel like that's part of your your fire your why yes. why you do everything you do yes was him and seeing his struggles him and you know what uh, uh uh, my mother as well because my father was 21 years older than my mother so my mom when when my father started decreasing on health and and as a supplier for the home and all that so my mother was super young right mm -hmm. so she stepped up and she started like I mean we can barely have I mean uh, money I mean even I mean for the day to day yeah. So my mother was so desperate that uh, suddenly she started, I mean, inventing businesses like selling jewelry. She was like buying a little bit of jewelry here and yeah. then selling that on payments. And uh, so I remember uh, very vividly when I was a teenager, I mean, looking the uh, my mother uh, uh, on the on the night i mean just doing all his business planning and all that i mean putting the pricing and the things and then in the early morning going out of the so it's the first time that i saw entrepreneurship there yeah and that's uh, what i was about to ask was that like the earliest memory you've had of yes. running your own business and yes yeah. and my mother yeah i was running i mean it was very successful on that and very successful in another two businesses and uh, yeah i mean i'm very proud of that and and because i saw how she reinvent herself to feed the family right yeah. and i so i learned that from that from her so i'm i'm honoring uh, also my mother on yeah that. no that's big and uh, i mean that's entrepreneurship to be yeah. honest i mean just i mean trying to survive and to change your narrative and yeah. uh, yeah, I, I love that. So that's why I ended up with the, with the book. 
Yeah. So uh, after all this experience, are you looking to write your second book? Uh, are you yes. Are you thinking of, of continuing to author and continue to do that? Yes. You seem to pu have pumped out this one pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. Because you know? it almost feels like yesterday I saw you, you know, when you went uh, to go visit uh, with Joe and, and everything. And, and then you, if you're telling me it happened between that time yes. and now, it was pretty, it's really Very quick. fast. I, and as I say, that even the company say, wow, Jose, and I, I was very diligent. Like the guy said, you know what, when, when we work with guys or businessmen to publish books, it's very hard because they, I mean, we yeah. put milestones and deadlines for uh, the, uh, the information that they, they need to share. And man, you are always early, you are very diligent. And that's the way I work. I, I yeah. love, I mean, I love, uh, to really honor my word and commitments and all that. Yeah. So I was very diligent and so passionate. So it was very, very fast. And I love it because I'm now I'm, I'm receiving reviews on Amazon yeah. from guys uh, that buy the, the book, other businessmen, yeah. and I love it. Even uh, two days ago, one guy, one uh, Latin entrepreneur sent me a screenshot of his review from Australia. Oh, so wow. I was, very honored to, yeah. to read that the guy say, you know what, your your book give me a lot of inspiration because I'm I'm here by myself on in Australia. I'm trying to change my life through entrepreneurship and it's hard and all that. Yeah. And you give me so much inspiration that I, I I will continue the grinding and all that. So that's the reason of the book. Yeah. That's the end goal for my book. Yeah. To inspire others. To inspire and, other yeah. guys and give them guidance and, and uh, tools, I mean, to use in any situation of, of business life. Yeah, thank you for doing that. And, and I know that you're also giving back in other ways, like you're, you know, you're, uh, can you share a little bit about the, the Stanford program and yes. uh, your impact uh, on young, younger people coming up and young entrepreneurs trying to get into to this world can you share a little bit about that yes so when I, when I was on the crisis of the million dollar that I told you I enrolled the company into a business accelerator program call it the bridge here on uh, by national with technology hub and it's sponsored by Microsoft so I was so eager to take everything out of that and use it as a tool yeah. that I won the, the first place on that one so Microsoft gave us twenty five thousand dollars in the wow. company that we reinvest in the company so someone on that Stanford program was looking for a, a business guy from El Paso to go to that to that program mm -hmm. so they immediately uh, the guys from the bridge they say you know what Jose Ochoa is the guy to be there so yeah. they they interview me they they listen to my story yeah. they review all my my company background and everything they say you know what yes mm -hmm. you are one of the guys that we want on, on the on the program it's at uh, the program it's a two-month program very intensive and it's everything about how to scale your company yeah so but the pandemic hits there when it yeah. was 2020 yeah so but that gave me the opportunity through that Stanford program to have mentorship, direct mentorship from Mark Cuban, from Chart Tank. So yeah. the guy was coaching us a lot of how to act during pandemic because everybody was scared to the shit yeah. about pandemic. So Mark Cuban, um, uh, he connect with us through Zoom from his house and he was um, giving us a lot of guidance to uh, small business owners. So that's a big privilege for free, right? Yeah. I mean, and uh, so yeah, so when I finalize that, I say, you know what? I start like do, being an ambassador of the program here in El Paso. So when I talk to other businessmen like you, mm -hmm. And they say, wow, that's a fantastic program. And, and, and I say, you know what? Do you want to go there? I can endorse you because I don't want to be the only one mm -hmm. here in El Paso on that program. So I, I endorse like three companies. I'm endorsing another company right now, uh, a technology company from Mexico. Mm -hmm. That it's, I, I firmly believe that those guys are going to be the next unicorn on, on, on the billion dollars. And they raised like almost like 
13, 15 million dollars already. So I am putting the founder of that company with the Stanford because I want another Mexican company, mm -hmm. laughing company that they can become unicorns. So I want, I, I'm, I'm, I'm putting everything together to do that. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm always thinking on abundance and sharing that yeah. because I think that's the only formula and recipe to change the narrative on Latins, right? And, and give uh, more opportunities for everyone. Yeah, because others before me, they opened the doors to me, right? They, they endorse me, they coach me, they mentor yeah. me. And I mean, I feel, I feel the privilege and uh, to do the same for others, right? I, yeah. so I love that, I love that. And, and that's the, my, my daily, my my daily thinking on how can i help other entrepreneurs right and um, that opens a lot of doors to me like i say guys from india are calling me to mentor them from guadalajara monterrey california so i love it i love to that because i learn a lot from them it's not that they learn yeah. from me i learn from them yeah Absolutely, always learning. Both uh, yes. happens both ways. What uh, can you share, uh, or can you tell me, what are some keys to scaling a business? Because I know that's probably one of the biggest challenges when somebody gets into business. Uh, I mean, it, just any tips that you can give on scaling and what what uh, business owners can do. To yes, the base, uh, the secret sauce is people. If you don't have a great team that understand the mechanics of the business, it's impossible to, to scale your business. So it was very clear for me over there that you have to build your company on, on, on a team. So you cannot be the one running the whole show mm -hmm. and because it's impossible to scale. I mean, yeah. and so I, I invested as well as like in myself, I invest on my team. I, yeah. I evangelize them a lot. So that's the key to scale your company. I mean, having the right players and, and the right seats with the right skills. Yes. So that it's, it's like, I mean, if you don't have that, it's impossible to scale your business. Even if I'm thinking on a business of one man, like being an influencer or things like that. I mean, you have to have a great team in your back, right? And that give you, the support that and the ability and the uh, agility to grow on that so yeah they i mean they emphasize on that and also on people but also on the company to having the right tools in the right place on the company yeah. like the right systems the right company culture the right technology uh, the right connections the right capabilities on the company yeah. so you have to be building uh, the right uh, capabilities for the company and another great thing that I learned there is that I was always looking for perfection right yeah. like no you know what uh, that's this is the plan to grow but until it's perfect we execute right and yeah. they say you know what it's better to be faster than perfect yeah right so it's it's hard but yeah I learned that as well so and you know what, talking with, with Joe Foster, the founder of Rebo, yeah. he told me, you know what, Jose, it took me 32 years to scale my company. 32 years. Now, wow. guys, they get frustrated if they don't get results in two years, right? Yeah. One year, they get frustrated, they quit. And I say, you know what, that's right. I have 14 years with my company and, uh, and I realized that the formula is to build brick by brick. Yes. And very solid because, I mean, it's very hard to be like a unicorn and in two years, like, I mean, grow like crazy. Yeah. Uh, it's very difficult. You see that very like for every million, you see one of those. So the right formula, to be honest, yeah. it's to do all the right things, invest in your people, invest in yourself and build brick by brick every single day, every single day. Yeah. And having that uh, formula uh, and that passion to build a company. So the compound effect over 10 years 
will be fantastic, right? Yeah. I mean, maybe you are not in the billions, but you will build a very strong, solid company that executes as a as a perfect machine, as a switch watch, right? Yeah. Every everyone knows what what to do, and uh, every everything flows uh, beautifully. Yeah. No. Thank you for sharing that with us because. There's so much that you just said right now, uh, but uh, you know, I think sometimes when we go into business, we expect it to go from here to here, yeah. right? Just like here, like, but a business goes this way, right? And yes. it takes time. Same thing I always tell people about marketing. It's a build up, right? And I think that build by brick by brick is very important because you got to address things and it sometimes it takes time. We are in a world now that things are hyper accelerated because of technology. Yes. I know I think you and I have talked about Peter Diamantis and yes. the author, uh, you know, about uh, uh, he has a book called The Future is Faster Than You Think. Yes. Um, he talks about companies like Instagram that, uh, you know, got bought out, uh, you know, within the first 10 years and, and they were worth more than Kodak was over 30 years, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, things are moving faster, but I think there's still a lot in a company that you're building culture, that you're building processes, that you're building all of this stuff. It takes time to do that and uh, it's not going to be perfect, uh, you know, and I think learning to go with a minimal viable product uh, and going with that and learning and continue to reinvent yourself over and over until Time is the key to to scaling right because yeah. it does take time I said that the two piece pa patient and, and patience right I mean yeah. both of them passion y paciencia yeah ¿verdad? porque I think that's I mean that's the key and it's very hard to be patient right because yeah. you have to pay the bills yeah. and you want to be you want to be on the great lifestyle and all that yeah yeah but that's i mean i think that's just uh, uh it's very hard if you if you put yourself on i mean the vision on that yeah i mean creating a business is it's very different it's very different creating a, one of the chapters in the book i say i mean creating um a business model is hard but creating a company out of that business model is even harder right absolutely so it's it's hard it's and hard. I, uh, I love uh, you mentioned leadership and people right uh, right now I'm currently reading uh, the book leaders uh, and really interesting because you're studying a lot of different leaders and it's it's a balance you can't be too hard or you run everybody off you can't be too soft or you won't get nothing done yes. right uh, but if you study great leaders they know how to inspire people and find the best Michael Jordan being one I know you and I have talked about yeah. Jordan uh, you talk to people around him and you've seen his uh, the last dance uh, his documentary where he talks about and people around him Scottie Pippen and all these other guys that say man this guy brought out a part of me that I didn't even know existed yeah. within myself you know and that's what makes a great leader is when you're able to bring that out of people uh, have them see things that they didn't see in themselves right and this is what's amazing about great leadership I'm still I feel like I'm you know I always say I'm always learning <laughs> you know uh, you never you never know it all but that's one subject that I've really focused on more and more uh, recently we went through a growth in the company I went up to 15 employees um, it's a lot to manage once you start getting up to 15 and plus it yeah. gets very chaotic you have a lot of different attitudes you have different people uh, you have clients that demand that work right uh, so there's a lot of moving parts and I learned from it that I needed to go back to the drawing board and learn more about how to manage people, how to inspire people, how to move people, uh, and and do this thing we call scaling, right? Uh, like we were talking about, it's very, it's it's easier just to reach success, but how do you sustain that success? Mm -hmm. And and not only sustain, but continue to grow over time. Uh, it, it's very difficult and it's very respectable when you see somebody do it. Somebody who's ran his business 14 years as yourself. What's some of the secrets to running a business 14 years you know trust trust and people um, I have a, a, a story on uh, during pandemic um, most of my staff my core staff they have um, more than 10 years with me okay we don't have rotation that 
tells you a lot about the environment that we have as a company, right? Yeah. And very friendly, very nice, and and I always challenge myself to create a company that I will love to work for, right? Yeah. So uh, during pandemic, I mean everybody at home, but uh, we have a, a one of the biggest account is Amazon. Yeah. So Amazon demands uh, during during pandemic to keep working, right? And to keep yeah. supplying them with some very key elements that we supply them here on Paso. So the person that I put in charge about that operation, it was, it is still Sylvia and one of, of, of my uh, staff players there. And uh, she only have high school she never worked before in the industry and she was very insecure right like oh my god jose it's a lot of responsibility for me and how do i take decisions and all that so previously a little bit before pandemic i start coaching her a lot like you know what you have to take your take your own decisions right yeah. so i don't want you to come to me every time you you need to take a decision i give you the whole power mm. and the benefit to take your decisions and call your own shots, okay? Yeah. And I will be good with you. If you lost money, no problem. It's gonna hurt, but you're gonna learn. And next time you are not going to do that. So in pandemic, she was the, one of the only ones there on the office. And she was running the Amazon project. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. So the guys from Amazon, they, they shoot a lot of emails saying, Wow, Sylvia, you know what? You are a great player. We love you. We we should not be successful without your support and all that. I mean, very good. So fast forward, one of the days she was knocking on my office. She sit down on my on my on my office and say, Can you give me five minutes? Say, you know what, Jose, I wanna thank you because you push me to discover capabilities and abilities on myself that I, that I don't even know. And my son, he just graduated from UTEP and he told me, hey, mama, I am very happy for you because I see you are very happy. And I never imagined my mother handling that amount of people, that amount of operations, and that amount of detail for Amazon. I mean, I never imagined my mother doing that. So she was very f happy and very thankful uh, about that. And that's the beauty of that. When you empower people now, I mean, I go to my office maybe once a week or maybe, I mean, or, uh, bi-weekly, I go one time over there and they run the whole show without me. That's what wow. I want. And that's what wow. you want. I mean, uh, uh, a company that runs without you because the more attached you are to the company mm -hmm. the less the value on the company yeah right so you have to create businesses not self-employment yeah that's something I, I learned through reading books is when you build a business there's two roads you build it and you work it till the day you die or you build it to sell it right yes and it's it's had me thinking a lot of the future and what you know what we do going forward and and that's what prompted us to start working on processes documenting processes um, having everything documented really but having really good data that we can utilize and and structure having more structure uh, that's amazing that you were, were you're working with amazon now too uh you know coming from that's really in your world that is the biggest player to work yes. with right other than like maybe walmart yeah. stuff like that but i know you recently attended a training for Amazon what did you get out from that training that uh, that you felt was a, a game changer or things that you learned from so, this well you know what I, I am uh, we are currently on on several projects I mean several programs on uh, on uh, to be a better supplier a better company and um, so the learnings are fantastic because it, it's very heavy because besides running the company you have to be learning and those sessions and all that but again what I see in all of them 
it's the the uh, the common ingredient it's people focus on people yeah and uh, how in emo em emotional intelligence how mm -hmm. do you take decision how do you empower others yeah uh, because they know I mean as I say previously that's the key to scale a company yeah. right if not you are going to be a changarro always right yeah the changarro and the changarro it's always you call all the shots right yeah I mean no one can move even a pen without the blessing of the owner right and yeah. that's a very small mind right and uh, so those guys on those very high level programs how important is that that they all three they focus on the basics of people yeah people, invest in people component culture empowerment leadership i mean even how to uh handle stress and all that is very heavy and also of course about how to do do due diligence on your vendors due diligence on on your clients because yeah. sometimes there's clients that I mean, they hurt. They hurt you. You don't need those clients, right? You need yeah. the right clients. So you That's be, absolutely you right. have to be able Sebastian. to identify, <laughs> to identify what's the right client that you want. Yeah, we're talking. We're having that conversation in our office. You know, making sure that we identify the right partners at this point where we're at. Uh, it's part of scaling, right? Yes. Uh, making sure that you're identifying not only like the internal stuff, but the people you're doing business with, right? Is it working out for both parties? Is it the right partner to have yes. in doing business? Uh, how much is technology playing a role in, in packaging and, and shipping today? Like, uh, uh, Of course, a lot. I mean, technology, is, it's key right now. Actually, we, I mean, we built a system all over the years, a custom-made system for orders, replenishment, shipping, all that. And now we recently, uh, we realized we need to upgrade on that. So yeah. we are moving into a cloud system yeah. with um, uh, QuickBooks Online yeah. that integrates all that. We are working also right now with a company on Guatemala yeah. to create a, our own app. So mm -hmm. clients, they can pick and choose our products from the factory on, on the maquiladora and the workplace and even that we want to give them the advantage that if they are in the carne asada on the on the on the saturday and they forgot about ordering something they can yeah. just take the phone and place the order to us so yeah. that way i mean you 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 give them advantages on time right time is money right now yeah absolutely and uh, so yeah it's very heavy and we are little by little in our capability capacity investing on that investing on people investing the time on on that we recently we we certified the company as a minority owned and we recently last year we certify the company as an 8a which uh, that give us a license for nine years to bid on contracts with federal government so okay. we are pursuing that yeah. and we hire a new new talent to help me on uh, on pursuing those contracts because it's very complex yeah no i think it opens more doors like for for, for fair uh, opportunities for people to compete especially as a minority company yes. uh, yeah i know when we've gone up for a few rfps they rec uh, request that you have that license of are you minority owned yes. right and so it's i think those things are important too if you're a business owner that you're taking advantage of other programs and things that you can do which help because they help during slow times or times that you may need to be able to offset some of the work you may be able to pick up some of this uh this contract work that helps to sustain your business correct uh you know so that's that's great that you you mentioned that um, you know, you, you have a lot, a lot that you've achieved over, <laughs> you know, these last 14 years, Jose. What are uh, big takeaways that you can share with somebody that's maybe sitting right now looking at this podcast and they're saying, I want to start my own business. I, what do you think are like some of the first things they need to do if they starting from zero? I'm just working a regular nine to five. Maybe I'm working uh, just a minimum wage. What, what do you, would you recommend to that person? First of all, you have to put your on yourself on on a mirror and ask yourself how tolerant i am to risk because you have to be very tolerant uh to risk because risk will be your daily soup 
every day. You will be taking risk on everything. I mean, I like that. when you risk, when you hire someone, there's a lot of risk. When you partner up with someone, risk, right? Yeah. When you send a request for a proposal, there's risk, right? That yeah. you mislead on calculations of that. So you have to be, every time you wake up in the morning, you have to think that at least you are going to have three to four risks to take and uh, and you will be with at least five problems in that day because in that way you have a different approach that you don't get frustrated right yeah. during the day because in the opposite side i just to say like oh this should be a beautiful day no <laughs> problems i mean it will be a fantastic day so the phone and then some emails with some problems so you get you start getting frustration right because you didn't expect that you expect yeah. the perfect day now every time i go i say okay yeah. what's the first problem of the day yeah. what's the first risk that i need to take this day so that way i approach in a better way yeah. and that give me a, a better output for the company and for myself and it's uh, so i i truly recommend that and uh, entrepreneurship could be from trying to improve your quality of life and the other could be like having awareness and realize that there is a business opportunity yeah. that you can fix some problem that others can't so that's the two routes that i see on entrepreneurship and uh, i mean it, it all depends you you just need to be a, a with a lot of awareness of what what do you want and then and, and with the book again i want to create the awareness on on young guys that want to go to business okay this it's it's what you have to expect don't expect the bmw the mercedes the, yeah. the cafe central all that <laughs> shit, okay so yeah. don't expect that you expect risk volatility and certainly uh, um, problems yeah. and less money yeah right and tripling your time of working that's yeah. for sure yeah that's for sure and if you don't understand that I mean you will fail miserable right yes. and you can have the best I mean the next uh, solution for the world yeah. but if you as an entrepreneur you are not ready yeah. I mean, you will fail and the world will be without your solution, right? Yes. So it's, I mean, it's a lot of things on that, yeah. but <laughs> that's my philosophy based on my own experience and by talking with other business owners, I mean, in all the sizes, I mean, small, uh, small companies, medium, big companies or juggernauts like Cuban and, and Joe Foster and yeah. things like that. And yeah, it's just like my legacy. I want to share that with others because uh, if um, I would love, if I was in my 20s, if I'm in my 20s right now, I would love to read a book like that. That's Absolutely. why I, and, and it's, I'm not talking about the book, the content of the book, I'm not talking from mastery. I'm still working on that, yeah. right? I'm not telling you that because I'm the master of all that, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm still working and struggling yeah. with that. It's yeah. a it's a work in progress, right? Yes. So I want to be clear on that. That I'm not. I don't want to be like the master. That oh yes, you do this <laughs> and that. No, I'm still working on that. I'm yeah. just sharing with you on my own experience that it's something that is going to help you a lot to succeed. Yeah, no, that's beautifully said. Um, I think you have to be bold, right? Whenever you start your business, you yeah. like I remember starting mine, and I just felt like, man, I can do that better. And you almost kind of gotta, you gotta kind of see the bridge before you jump, right? Mm -hmm. Or you have to see land at the end of that uh, sea trip that you're going to be taking. Um, and sometimes during the whole time, you're like, what, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, like, is this really what I want to do? And then when you're like, oh, I want to go back to a regular job and you're like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. That's not who I am. And uh, I think it comes a lot from your inspiration, uh, you know, from your dad and his, his fighting career, uh, his boxing career. 
uh, and just meeting other people. I think you've met some really interesting people, man, and, and that, that makes for an interesting story. Uh, so thank you for sharing that with us. I think you've had a lot of really good insight and writing a book, that's inspirational. I've told you I've always wanted to, to write a book and I know I had a ton of questions and, and man, we can go on this podcast for 10 hours talking about how you set up a book, how you do the, <laughs> you know, cause there's so much, but, uh, thank you for sharing all that information because that's i think this this podcast has been golden if you're somebody who's looking to get up and do something uh if you look back at this podcast you're going to see a lot of really golden nuggets uh but one of the things that i i, I see about you and i see a lot of very uh, similarities uh is your hunger to want to learn man yeah. and you know i I see myself as still learning too. Yeah. Like I, I put my business world is connected to martial arts as well a lot. Yes. Uh, I've met some great people in martial arts and uh, who inspired me. Um, but if you meet those people, they're very humble. They're still learning. As even as masters, we see them as masters. They see themselves as students. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's really important to always have that attitude and have the attitude of gratitude and and uh, you give back. How how important? I know you're big on networking and stuff like that. How important do you think that is to also be successful in business networking it's um, uh, let me let me put it that easy one of the things that I learned from Joe Foster mm. he told me Jose you never know when you are going to meet the person that is going to take you to to the whole next level yeah okay so that give me uh, the the vision to keep investing on networking yeah. if, because it's hard. I mean, it's not like going networking here on on a on a on a dinner here or that. I mean, that's okay. But if you are serious about networking, yeah. you gotta be open to invest heavily in travel. Like, I mean, I, I go on networking in Miami, I go in, in California, and I was like, uh, I mean, I was on a business trip on, on France, and I, and I was networking with Joe over there, mm -hmm. and I, I get in to know Joe Foster because networking, because someone invited me to a selected group of founders uh, on London, and uh, so I, I say yes, okay, I wanna be part of that room, that conversation, and I don't even know who's in the room, right? Yeah. It was just about what's the concept, about sharing wisdom. Yeah. So I enrolled myself and I put the time and everything, and then I realized I was next to uh, the founder of Reebok and this executive from Coca-Cola and this from Starbucks and those guys, right? And I was, uh, the beauty of that, and it, I was like thinking on my bed like, wow. This guy from Chihuahua City, from El Paso, <laughs> I was able to sustain yeah. my game and my conversations yeah. with those guys that they they control the business and the sports athletics yeah. on the 80s, 90s, right? Yeah. And I'm a just a small business owner of El Paso, right? Yeah. So is where you see the effect of books investment yeah. reading and, and and networking and then uh, being in other rooms with other guys absolutely so that's the only way that you can sustain uh, a conversation with those guys right yeah and it's not just sustaining that it's creating the friendship right yeah. that the yeah. guys say i want you with me in mexico city yeah right so they see value in you right and the guy he don't even he never asked me what's the size of my company what's the size of my revenue how many employees do i have yeah it was just enough with him to see the quality of the person the quality of the conversations Conversation, yeah. and the trust that i create with him yeah so that's very critical for entrepreneurs yeah. to build that and, and i know it's not for everyone yeah because not everyone like to network and in a high level and all yeah. that because you have to be in best and but you can start little by little like i started here with cafe and pan dulce yeah with the hispanic chamber of commerce then yeah. i jump into uh jóvenes empresarios yeah. and then i jump to ground breakers of el paso and then i jump to the microsoft thing and then, yeah. then i jump to the stanford
Singapore and then with those guys in London and that's I mean the compound yeah. effect right absolutely the, but you gotta start small yeah you gotta start small yeah and be patient and invest yeah. Yeah, and I think Joe is looking at you like, doesn't matter how big his company is, the quality of the conversation, you see the potential in somebody. Yes. You know, I always tell, I tell these guys all the time, you never know who you're in front of and who you're talking to, man. I've had people that I've met years back and then they think of me five, eight years later, I've had a job offer. I got a, one of my, uh, I got a job at iHeart Media like that because I left an impression on the guy. He was a salesperson at the time. He went on to be the president uh, and he reached out to me because of that conversation five, eight years ago, you know? So yes. uh, you never know who you're in front of. And I to always tell these guys, I never doubt these guys. These guys may be the future Elon Musk's, you know, we don't, don't know some of the guys you're coaching. Uh, you may yes. be coaching the next future. Yes, yeah. correct. And it, and it was a, 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 a small, uh, during the, um, my uh, dinner with Joe Foster and his, his wife on, 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 on Paris, I yeah. was there. And I was on, on the dinner and I told him, I told him, you know what? That's the beauty of business life, right? Yeah. Because two years ago, I was struggling and I'm almost shooting down my company. Yeah. And now <laughs> my business give me the capability to invite you a dinner yeah. in Paris in your favorite restaurant when when you were on your peak of business selling billions i was a teenager on mexico on on chihuahua city uh, dreaming on having a pair of your shoes dreaming just yeah. dreaming because i i i couldn't afford yeah. so now amazing. 30 years later I'm able to invite the founder of that company with my own money, with my own company, to this nice fancy dinner in Paris and learn from you and, and be elbow to elbow. I mean, talking about business. Yeah, How cool. beautiful is that? That's amazing. Just business give you that opportunity. It just right? shows that's, that's what this is all about. This is what this podcast is about, yeah. uh, to spark inspiration yes. and to reach people in these areas and the Latino community because we don't have as much of a voice as I feel like we should. Uh, and these are ways that we can do it using technology now to, to be able to reach people and reach people in harder places where people are still struggling and are that key it that you were in the past dreaming about having those shoes you know I, I know I was there myself too uh, you know where my mom couldn't afford uh, to buy me a pair of shoes uh, and you know I, I remember a baseball coach uh, one time uh, bought me a pair of shoes to go play for his team mm. you know that was my payment <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, it's it's cool to see the evolution yes. and just to inspire and so i hope even if like you said even if i can reach one five people or we're reaching these now these masses like this where we can leave these videos up on the internet and people can find them uh, i think it's it's really cool not only that but to show people from this area you run a company here in el paso this is local this is for this is for people from this area and not only are from this area but just latino people in general that that can look up to that and say hey man if jose did it and he's an author now yeah. and he's running his own business i can do it myself yeah. too and i'm i'm not different than anyone i mean i and i don't i'm, I'm not smarter than anyone yeah. it's just that you you put the attention you put the work yeah. you put the the uh, the I mean the pieces together to do that and uh, what's more powerful than dreaming right? yeah. I mean dreaming is everything if you walk out in the street and you and you are not able to dream big I mean man you are on your knees yeah, yeah? and it's powerful like yeah these young guys here with the cameras I mean I hope they catch something like that little seed and yep. i mean they can kick the ass of banner shot later yeah. right yeah, yeah i mean why not and i mean it's it's i mean we are all on the same level of the game yeah. right it's 
it's up to you it's up to you what do you want to do and uh, I mean I'm not I mean just like I mean young guy middle, low middle class from Chihuahua yeah. uh, public schools yeah. I mean no stand for no that things <laughs> just yeah. just public school yeah and then um, I'm able now to to interact with guys with master's PhDs on Stanford yeah. Harvard. Yeah. I mean, juggernauts like Joe and, and other guys. Yeah. And it's- uh, Isn't it amazing you go home amazing. and you're like, like, what the hell, how did I get here? But it's like, I, 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 uh, we get the opportunity to advise doctors and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And I just, I go home and I'm just like, wow. with a happy face, you know, just thinking about it. Like, man, I, I've come so far, man, from, yes. you know, from uh, being real poor and, and being the kid that that the parents would be like go to the next house don't come here you know yeah. uh to to somebody who's accepted and and respected uh, amongst our community so yes. um I respect you a lot for that thank and you. thank you for doing that brother thanks for oh, also uh, you. you know uh, can you uh, before because we, we're gonna get ready to close up how, how much are we in because we yeah so uh, <laughs> yeah we, had to, we can go very uh, long on this podcast I just know. especially when we have a very interesting guest thank like you. yourself thank you so much um, uh, tell us a little bit I know you're gonna be talking at Latin talks and stuff yes. like that um, what does that something like that mean to you when you get to talk to a crowd of people too like what's the mindset what it, uh, you know uh, like how does that differ from like something like this yes well it it give me the mindset that I have for events like that especially that one uh, Latin talks which is it's uh, is uh, in the benefit of our community, right? Yeah. To to share our setbacks and experience with other entrepreneurs here locally. Yeah. I I put myself on the mindset that it's everything about them. Yeah, it's not about me. Yeah, I'm just the vehicle for yeah, that. Exactly. And uh, so I that's what empowers me uh, to be on the stage and do my best to share like like here. Yeah, like here, everything. I mean that I'm uh, that I'm telling you that I'm sharing even in my short English. It's because I care about them. I yeah. care about. It's about them. The guys looking that on the video, looking that on 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 TV or whatever it is, because I was there before. Yeah. And I and I want to be the same agent of change and inspiration like others mm -hmm. help me on that so th this Latin talks is a perfect opportunity for me to do something uh, that little thing for others yeah like and sharing the inspiration and as I say I always talk from not from mastery as I say I don't want to, I, I don't, I'm not telling you here that I'm the best entrepreneur or the best uh, whatever it is. I'm not. I'm yeah. not. I'm working in process and I'm still struggling with everything that I'm telling you. I just want to, if I can save you $5,000 <laughs> or maybe a yeah. million dollars, yeah. <laughs> right? I, I will be proud of that because yeah. that way you will be able of create more employment instead of cutting people off yeah. right and uh, so that's the mindset that i have always on that and uh, that that's the perfect opportunity this latin yeah. talks it's perfect to share that million dollar uh, master degree on, right. on business, right? <laughs> and all the books. Million dollars. Yeah, and all the books to try to and compress the that. Yeah, yeah and then the book. But I, I can feel it in your energy as I talk to you. I feel your enthusiasm and it's refreshing. You know, you definitely, you. you can always feel that when you talk to somebody. It's energy that you don't know. We said we talked about this when we shot together, yeah. right? Um, it's the energy uh, that you feel and the enthusiasm that you feel, the passion that you feel when somebody brings it. And that's when you make great things happen you know yes and i'm so. very introvert even my family they always say to me i mean how come you are on tv <laughs> or you are on this yeah. podcast and this and that yeah. i mean if you are very shy and, and and yes i am i'm i'm very i mean i'm very short and all that yeah but my passion is yeah. bigger than that yeah so that's <laughs> why i'm able to do this and be fluent for an hour and 20 minutes yeah sharing the passion and i can be here three hours man. absolutely and um, <laughs> i don't know it's just something that i 
I see as a gift that someone give me give it to me yeah uh, bigger than me and uh, so when I pass yeah. if I go heaven I wanna I wanna be like if they ask me hey I give you all these gifts yeah. and, and 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 capabilities mm -hmm. why you didn't share and, and utilize those so I wanna say you know what I I empty the tank yeah and everything exactly I give everything I what I have that's right so feel. that's why I was uh, I took the risk to publish the book because at the at the beginning I yeah. was feeling like I mean why someone would like to yeah. uh, why do I have a special that I can be uh, creating a book or writing a book and then someone will open the wallet and give me 20 bucks to read my book right so it's a lot of conflict but yeah. then you know what I say man life is so short yeah and I have the privilege to live this wonderful life of setbacks experiences and success I will share it I, I don't care what others say yeah I just wanna if I'm able to impact one one guy that's enough for me that's that's the deal that's the end goal for that book even if it's just one guy if I change the narrative of one guy yeah that's, that's the only message I don't expect anything you other are than that you are you are brother yeah thank like you. I can tell you just just in our conversations <laughs> like I've picked up a lot just in this little oh, conversation thank you appreciate it uh, I, I learn a lot from you as yeah, well thank you so you're a great businessman yeah thank you so are you I mean uh, thank you. it's just feeding off of this energy man and yes. I think this is what we need in our community uh, to change like you said I, I've, I've had a uh, people or I had this one manager that one time told me if you want to change the world you got to first start off by changing yourself. yourself and you can change your family and you can change and then it grows from there but yeah. you know you have to start from within um, you know and it takes time like you said but uh, we've, we've done great things uh, and met great people and I think those people inspire us to keep pushing or like you say you read a message from somebody in Australia yes it just picks you up and lifts you up to oh, the yeah. next thing you yeah. know and I, I do that a lot too when I get uh, really good yeah, I get people that say, you know, your videos calm me and they provide me peace or, you know, they inspire me. Uh, I get this a lot with people say, that's not how El Paso looks, but it's not nothing I'm doing. I'm just showing you what you're not seeing. Yes. You know, right. there's beauty there. Yeah. Everywhere. All around us is yeah. beauty. And uh, I think the big lesson in what you're, you're saying, too, is to take advantage of every second. Yes. Empty the tank. Uh, yes. Yeah. And trust and yeah. build trust with your people. Yeah, build trust. Uh, have faith in people too. Yes, absolutely. We've done amazing things. You know, when I see uh, things like uh, like the Golden Gate Bridge or things like that, you think people built this. Somebody yeah. thought this in their brain. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing I'm a big dreamer. Do you, you're a, are you a big dreamer since oh, you were yeah, a kid? I'm you a dream? I'm a big, big dreamer. Yeah. I, I just do, even I say that on the introduction of the book, when I was a kid with my father, I just, he bought me uh, the binoculars yeah. to see the, I love to see the moon, yeah. the stars. So every afternoon in the night, we go outside on the, on the house and then I, I start looking and it, it, I feel like, wow, I mean, how come something is floating there in the air with that light? And uh, I mean, who put that there? Yeah right and what's the reason of that thing that they call it moon to be there or the stars and yeah. i mean i start thinking a lot a lot yeah. about that a lot of reflection and i i suffer of a lot of curiosity yeah curiosity about i think that's uh, key to any you know to curiosity to, you have to be curious all the key, time it's key, yeah man, to be yeah. like uh, to start a business right like i i fail with a e-commerce business that i create of airbots so i but i was so curious about learning about how e-commerce works yeah. and how to create a product and a brand yeah so i invest heavily on that and i learn a lot for one year 
and now I even that I fail in the business yeah I learn a lot and I and I know the mechanics of e-commerce and branding and creation of products yeah. manufacturing and overseas yeah all that yeah so, no uh, ever uh, ever was our last guest on our last and he said just do <laughs> yeah. because I think through doing we learn right through failing we learn that's how we grow and we become better at what we do so and have fun yeah have fun <laughs> in the process yeah because I mean if you are doing and then conducting and creating your business and your life is miserable yeah it's not worth it, right yeah. so you have to have fun fun on that enjoy the journey because it, it's a never an end, ending journey I yeah. mean you will never end that journey yeah. right even that you say oh, okay I want to hit the 10 million dollars on this and that yeah I mean do it's you set goals end. goals for yourself like that yes I set goals in uh, in terms of fulfillment yeah. of myself more than goals like of course I have my metrics in the company like yeah. okay for this year I want to duplicate the revenue and all yeah. this and that but on myself like uh, I start everything start always like a little seed like the book yeah. I start like oh what about a book Jose yeah. and then my <laughs> wife say oh Jose I know those eyes <laughs> and uh, like on the e-commerce yeah. I start like you know what I hate every time that I go to dinners and people start talking heavily about Amazon yeah. oh I hate Amazon oh no I love Amazon and, and I don't want to talk without knowing yeah so I go all deep I say okay so I bought a, a big uh, very expensive training on Amazon how to create your Amazon business from nothing yeah. to scaling in other in other countries. So I was like 11 months after after hours of my office because I don't want to take uh, take the time of my company yeah. to create this other company. Absolutely. So I doubled down on the on the time. So after yeah. work in the office, I start working on the nights over there. I even challenge my kids and I say guys today is this day this hour i'm going to start a new company it's an e-commerce on amazon do you want to join me and be my partners yeah. of course they say no <laughs> but yes. i but i invite them yes. right and uh, and i start from there 11 yeah. it took me 11 years 11 11 months to learn all that and i invest good money on that but i i learn a lot now yeah. every time we have a uh, family dinners yeah they we talk about that yeah. oh remember when you create those airpods and yeah and when the the people from china they send you the the beat i was on the skype at 1 a.m 2 a.m in the morning i mean looking the factory how they build my product and all that and uh, tracking the the shipment from hong kong to chicago and i was all that now it's a it's a great experience for my yeah. kids and say oh remember all the brand all oh, i remember the videos and, and even when i uh take out the product from amazon i put a kiosk here in the, on a cielo vista mall yeah and i put my kids to work there and i put myself i and i hired young uh, teenagers mm -hmm. and they were like uh, kind of lazy like ah oh, <laughs> selling they say okay let me show you how to sell okay i'm going to sell if if this old guy fat guy can <laughs> sell fuck man you can sell yeah and i was demonstrating to the guy and say oh it really works i say fuck yeah. man yeah i mean it really works you gotta be with the right attitude and everything yeah a lot so, of a lot of people say that uh, the first skill you should learn is sales 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 I mean, man you gotta all, know how to sell yourself you gotta know how to talk yeah yeah and i'm i'm not afraid of that i was selling fruit i was yeah. i mean i'm selling a lot of stuff so yeah. i i mean even that they say oh bah, but I mean, you own this company and now you are selling airbots here in the mall. <laughs> Fuck that, man. Yeah. I, I don't care. I mean, uh, give me even more value. Yeah. I'm showing you how yeah. to do business. And um, so, yeah, I was there. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> it was hard because it was weekends over there with the family. We spent yeah. the weekends there. But it's a, it was a great experience. Absolutely. It was a good business, but it was a great experience that, that gave me the skills and the tools to be on these conversations now, yeah. right? 
That's yeah. good stuff, man. Uh, very inspirational. <laughs> we definitely got to run it back. And maybe the next time we run it back, I know you uh, you like to smoke cigars. Yes. Maybe we do a cigar session. Absolutely. And uh, we do uh, a session where we can do cigars and podcast. Yeah. I think it would be really good because I think there's, there's a wealth of information. There's a lot of stuff that we can share. And there's a lot of things that people are going to pick up off this podcast. So oh, thank uh, you. we're going we're gonna to wrap up. We're, I know we're, we're already in over, thank but I appreciate you coming over and taking your time because no, I know you're you. busy. It's a big honor for me the, for you to open this I mean this this window of time uh, just to hear my experience or hear yeah. my stories uh, it's a privilege for me it's a, it's an honor to for you guys to give me the time to share. Yeah, no, it's great having you and uh, your story has been inspirational to us uh, and uh, I think overall like my experience just with you has been always great and Thank you. Uh, I, I see I see big things you know to I, I think this is just the start of Jose Ocho I think you're gonna be Thank doing you. more things and I look forward to you reading your book and picking up your book if you guys uh, have a chance uh, jump on Amazon and get Jose Ochoa's book get in the ring get in the ring yeah. And uh, he, uh, we were talking about other ways. He right now has it available, Kindle and hard copy. Uh, Paperback. And we're going to put this up on the podcast. So we'll put that with the link to the book so you guys can check it out. And support your uh, uh, local author, you know, because yeah. uh, this guy's uh, author from here from El Paso. I mean, here's, he's, he works and lives in our community. Yes. Uh, so I think it's important to support other people from our community that are, that are doing things, man. Yes. So. And, and as I say with the book, the only intention is to, uh, to be uh, putting that seed in young guys. I mean, not necessarily in young guys, but in everyone that needs yeah. some inspiration yeah. and some guidance yeah. on, on this uh, very dramatic and very hard uh, market of entrepreneurship yeah. and I'm, I'm glad of that and, he, and give me your i mean honest review if you don't like it just kick my ass there on the reviews yeah. if you like it i mean great i mean it's um that's the only intention of the book and, and thank you thank you for the opportunity and yeah uh, let's get in the ring <laughs> yeah let's get in the ring so that's it guys we're gonna wrap up uh remember to subscribe to the youtube uh this is how we we create more content for you guys and you get more information like this if you like this leave a comment at the bottom because we like to hear some of your feedback you know follow us on on social media pick up the book uh so continue to support and uh jose thanks again for coming man so that thank wraps you it up. And, and invite me for to thank those wings on uh, Chico Stack. We are. We're gonna do the. <laughs> we're gonna do the pizza challenge. We want to do. Uh, have a guest, so maybe we can have Jose be one of the first guests yeah. since we want to. I, I, I know that. about food. <laughs> <laughs> blindfolded is a different experience. Yes, it's, uh, I blindfolded. Love it. Ear, I, I love it. I, I, I love to see your videos with my kids and my family <laughs> over there. Thanks. We have a lot of fun, and it's very. I mean, very, very nice to see the quality and the and the different uh, um, game that you are given to the to the marketing and to the media it's yeah. it's fantastic awesome so and guys uh you can catch jose and myself both we're going to be talking at the latin talk yes uh september 24th september 24th so you guys can pick up the tickets i'm going to also add the link so Devin will add the link at the bottom uh so you guys can pick up tickets i think the tickets are free right That's yeah it's free. It's, it's a free it's a free event. event man you guys can go out there and check it out so uh we'll add the link at the bottom uh, as we wrap up, I want to thank uh, Sebastian and Devin and uh, new addition to the team, Brian. Uh, they're thank the guys, guys making the mag magic happen behind the camera. So yeah. again, uh, thanks again. And Jose, we'll see you still next time, brother. We'll, we'll do this you. again. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you for having me and, and uh, let's have fun. Yeah, that's it, guys. That wraps up another episode. Thanks again.